Good night, good night. This is Linus on the Rise coming at you today. And um, <clears throat> this is actually the second part to um, the first segment that I did was manipulation of black people, which leads to their destruction. And um, it's really a combination of manipulation and join um, together with miseducation. So this is the second part of this segment today. Um, that I initially made and um, of course you know how we do this we start everything out with a scripture that's how we fight these wars so I'm going to start off with the first the scripture that is relevant to this particular topic and that is Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge I also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy Yahuwah, I also will forget thy children. Now, <clears throat> these are the second part of this segment is um, points that I didn't get a chance to talk about, and you know I'm kind of going to be bouncing around a little bit, but I'm praying that at the end of it, it would all make sense to you. Um, I had initially had said I wanted to point out, you know, just going back a little bit, you know, with uh, Malcolm X. And um, Martin Luther King. Now, Malcolm X was always for um, segregation, and Martin Luther King was for integration. And you know, of course, he made that quite clear at the end of his um, near the end of his life. He said those those famous words, "I believe I've left I've led my people into a burning building," and he was very right. But on the other hand, um, Malcolm he was for segregation. And, you know, at the time when I heard about segregation, it didn't seem like it was the right thing to do because I, I felt like, you know, we should be able to enjoy certain benefits. But as, you know, with, with more education and experience, I clearly see that segregation was probably the best thing that should have happened to black people. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. I think we would have been quite better off. But that's not what the enemy would have allowed because he had his own agenda and plan. And he knows that when black people are, are united and we are together, we are unbeatable. And he couldn't allow that to happen. So therefore, he has, for over centuries and leading up to this point, have put uh, strategic plans in place to manipulate and um, miseducate black people and people overall. Okay? So... <clears throat> Here's one of the points that I'm the first point that I'm pointing out right now um, to the second part of the segment is that I have discovered in my history, um, in my time, um, coming into this truth and understanding of us as a black people. Black people overall, which is their biggest downfall, they do not have any desire or motivation to search out their black history. As to why did black people go into slavery? Okay, I think if we answer that question, we would be able to really understand why we are in the position that we're in right now today. Okay, I took the opportunity to um, highlight a, a couple of scriptures that would be very useful for you guys. And one of those, one of, the, of course, I always tell people if you want to understand the history about black people, read Deuteronomy. Okay. Deuteronomy in chapter 28, um, verse 15. I suggest reading all of it. Okay, I'm just pointing out some, just some certain scriptures just to um, provoke you and to perk your curiosity to, under, to read more. But okay, verse 15 said, But if you will not obey the voices of Yahuwah your Elohim, or be careful to do all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in a city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Some may have country. 
And cursed shall be your basket and your kneading trough. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, the increase of your cattle and the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. Okay, I'm going to continue to go on to, um, as you hear these scriptures, I, I want you all to really think about, as I say them, think about what people have suffered in this particular capacity. Okay? The next prescription that I wanted to highlight for you guys is actually, um, I did verse um, 20. I'm sorry. Um, I said scripture quite okay. So Yahuwah will send upon you curses, confusion, and frustration in all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly. And I'm sorry, on account of the evil of your doings, because you have forsaken me. Um, I also pointed out Deuteronomy. Uh, we are in still in chapter twenty-eight, verse uh, forty-nine. Yahuwah will bring a nation against you from afar and from the end of the earth as swift as the eagles fly, a nation whose language you do not understand, a nation of stern countenance, who shall not regard the person of the old or show favor to the young, and shall eat the offsprings of your cattle and the fruit of your ground until you are destroyed. Um, <clears throat> that particular scripture there, uh, I'm sure that if you listen to it, it really talks about um, black people who what what nation came against black people? And you need to sit down and think about that. And he said, um, "Swift as eagles fly." A lot of a notation. If any of all any of you all who are familiar with the Bible, you are aware that um, a lot of the revelations uh, they identify um, the rev, um, in Revelation the America and Europe, you know, as you know, as the eagle. And they are always preferred as the eagle, and as you all very well know that um, you, uh, America uses uh, eagle as a symbol in many of their military wear, I believe, and um, not just America, many countries, I believe many nations have the eagle as a, um, and especially European nations have the eagle as a symbol in their, um, in their particular symbolism. Um, the next scripture I wanted to um, point you all, which really homes it in, I think for me, anyways, and it should for you guys. And Yahuwah will scatter you among all people, from one end of the earth to the other, and there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your father have known. And among these nations you shall find no ease, and there shall be no rest for the sole of your foot. But Yahuwah will give you there a trembling heart and a failing eye and a languishing soul and your life shall hang in doubt before you night and day shall be in dread okay so uh, that's the point I wanted to point out you know black people you have been given so many different reasons and I guess different scenarios about your start and one of the biggest problems I know that a lot of black people we are we are sometimes most of the time we are not all on the same page as when it comes to, when it comes to our history. A lot of people want to dispute about the whole slavery um, evolution. I guess you, I want to put it like that: the whole slave slavery um, uh, phenomena that happened with black people and. You have some of them saying that you know how we were already here, so it's a lot of confusion. So you, you you're going to couple that with the conscious community, who also embraces the uh, the Egypt, I'm sorry, Egyptology um, culture, and which is also indoctrinated into Black history, and that just leads to more confusion. And the problem is that people just really do not take the time to find out um, things for themselves. You know, they don't want to try to investigate, go any further. They just want to be, they just want to settle with what other people tell them because they don't want to do the work. They don't want to take the time to find out, right? Okay, so now we're moving on, you know. Um, the one, the next point I wanted to talk about, excuse me, um, is the new social media. Um, and I feel like that's almost like, um, 
on the flip side, soft porn. Because uh, you have Twitter and Facebook. You have people that are putting on Twitter, you know, on Facebook, their sexual intercourse um, that that they you know that they're having with one another. You know, they're having sexual intercourse. Excuse me, and they're posting it. And and that seems to be quite acceptable to them to do that. And if you know when people get to that point that they're posting their sexual experiences on these social media apps, and people are not even recognizing and 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 coming into any kind of awareness that this is not right, right? And one of the things that I um, pointed out, and and this is where we are going to really suffer, um, and many of you all. Instead of you all, you know, at least making the decision and looking at, say, you know, this is wrong. We should not be doing this. Excuse me for a second. I drink my tea, you know. Um, you know, many have fallen into this deception of this um, um, immorality, and you all are under serious spiritual blindness. In Thessalos, I'm sorry, Second Thessalonians, chapter three, uh, verses ten. 2.12 says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they have received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, Yahuwah will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And see, this is the part where you all are going to perish because you all are taking pleasure in this unrighteousness. You take pleasure in um, fornication. You take pleasure in homosexuality. You take pleasure in adultery. You taking, you're taking pleasure in these things. And when people try to tell you that these things are wrong, you all, um, you know, you, you, you're blatantly defiant. And you're saying that, you know, this is my life. And the first thing you all say is don't judge. This is not about, we are not telling you nothing that's not already been judged. All of these things have been judged in the Bible. The Most High has already said, if you do not obey these laws, this is the consequences if you do not obey the law. So as far as I'm concerned, when I'm calling things out that are wrong, such as fornication, homosexuality, adultery, and all of the things that he has indicated that we should not be doing, then I guess you are going to have to classify me as being judged. I'm, I'm judging you all because you should not be doing it. He said you're not supposed to do it. It's already written. He's already made a decision and a determination of doing a act, any of those acts that I have just called out to you. Okay? If you look in um, Corinthians 6 verses 9. Okay, we're going to go there right now. This is actually going to be 1 Corinthians, okay? 1 Corinthians. So we're looking at chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah? Elohim, do not be deceived, and neither the immoral, nor the idolaters, idol, the idolaters, I'm sorry, yeah, idolaters, or the adulterers, no homosexuals, no thieves, nor the greedy, the drunkards, the revilers, the robbers will inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Okay? The other one that I pointed out, the other scripture that speaks to this is Isaiah chapter 30. I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 30. chapter 30 chapter 30 verses 9 to 13 for there are a rebellious people lying sons who will not hear the instructions of Yahuwah who say to the seers see not and to the prophets prophesy not to us what is right speak to us smooth things prophecy illusions leave the way turn aside from the path let us hear no more of the holy one of Israel okay so that's saying you all don't want to hear anything about you all call him God 
I call him Yahoo and some may call him you know Yahawa you know um, I know some may still be calling him Yahweh but you know again I always say this is a personal um, path that everyone has to walk with the father in finding his name and Yahushua I say Yahushua or oh, some may say Yeshua I was saying Yeshua for quite some time I actually made a segment that said Yeshua but it's really, I was right. The first time that I discovered um, Yahushua's name, I had had it right. So, <clears throat> um, you know, this is pointing to this stuff. Now, one of the things under this, um, under this particular topic that I'm talking about, um, uh, the social media being soft porn, there's another thing that associated with social media. And I think this, and some of you are, should be familiar with this particular term it's called predictive programming and many of you all are underneath this, this predictive programming okay and um, the reason why I am bringing this out because under the um, the segment that I had before prior I didn't get the chance to bring it out I actually started talking about the nervous system the nervous system manipulation which is by electromagnetic fields, which comes out from monitors. And what that is, is it's, it's really it's, um, psychological effects that have been observed in human subjects in response to simulation of the skin, which weak electromagnetic fields that are pulsed with pulse with certain frequencies near one and a half hertz. I had problems saying this word before. Hertz. 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 2.5, 2.4 hesychrates. I mean, that's 2.4 HC, okay? Such as the, that excites a sensory um, renaissance. Renaissance. Uh, many cell phones, uh, computer monitors, and TV tubes, when displaying pulse images, emanates pulse electrical magnets. Feel of sufficient amplitude to cause such excitation. If, if it is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displayed on a nearby computer, monitor, or TV set. I urge you all to really do the research on this and really find out and understand what this particular pattern is doing to people. Now the pattern number that I'm going to provide you today, please write it down. It is U number SSM number 650 and they have B as in boy number two. Okay. Please take the time to read about this pattern. This, what this particular pattern is about, which it comes from, um, it's emanated from cell phones, computers, and television. It is a nervous system manipulated. This is actually manipulating your nervous system. So it's actually having a psychological effect on you as well as a physiological effect. And that is a dangerous thing when you have devices that are able to uh, manipulate your nervous system on what it wants it to do okay so you are being controlled without you not even being realizing it many of you all walk or look around you when you're outside in your day-to-day -day business excuse me taking the bus taking a train you will see a variety of people with your heads in the phone they cannot stop looking at their phone now here's the other thing I check out this other guy he was um Another person that I was listening to about this same problem, who, who mentioned his his, uh, his channel is from Richie from Boston. He was talking about predictive programming, and he mentioned something about. Um, he said they are showing the end times in TV. Now he said his analogy is why this is why people are walking around like total zombies. Okay, and he pointed out out that. Um, Okay, here's the thing that he here's a connection that he made. He said the correlation is is with the it's called a black skyring mirror. Okay, please go online and find out what that what is, and I'm gonna spell it for you because um, how I'm sp saying it is not how it's spelled. Black skyring mirror is S C R Y. I'm sorry, S is in Sam, C is in cat, R is in run, Y is in yellow. Eyes and ink, NG. Okay, mirror. This particular kind of mirror, it is believed to use to conjure up demons. Okay, example, dead relatives, you know, anybody. They use this particular kind of mirror for these type of seances. 
This same kind of type of mirror is on your cell phones and they also use it on your computer as well as on your TV. Notice how the, the color of the TV is like a mirror, but it's a black mirror. And that's what a scaring black mirror looks like. All right, please take the time to do the further research and find out more about this, okay? The other thing that I want to talk to you guys about too is this thing called consensual telepathy. And many of you all, um, if you're not already aware of it, or if you're not already in, you know, aware of the, you're in the truth and you know about all of these psychological things that you're doing to us, doing to human beings, and how they are um, manipulating them to do things that, you know, they typically wouldn't be doing because they want to control you mind, body, and soul. You people do not seem to understand the severity of how things are transgressing, trans I'm sorry, transpiring so quickly under your under your nose, under your very eyes, and you all are being slowly um, integrated integrated into this system without you even being real without you even realizing it. Now, consensual consensual telepathy that they're using, they're going to use this. They're going to use it in social media apps to let it to to uh, to let. I'm um, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to say this word. Telepathy, telepathy is, is telepathically to communicate with your brain. The danger here is that they will be able to invade your thoughts and put thoughts in your head. This can this is a complete form of control over your mind. This is how they're going to corrupt your souls even further. If you allow um, this type of um, um, mechanism or type of device or, or this type of procedure, you go along with this agenda, this Okay, and, and it says consensual because you're consenting for something or some kind of entity to enter in your brain so you can be able to think about what you want to put in, 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 your, in the computer or what you want to say to let, um, using telepathy uh, in your social media app. And to me, you all are treading on dangerous grounds if you allow any kind of social media app or any kind of device to... Um, to access your brain, all for the sake of convenience. I said it before. That word convenience is going it is going to kill you. It is certainly is humanity demise. It is humanity's demise. This word called convenience. Okay. Um. The other thing I pointed out that, you know, his reflection is that people spend half of their day looking at their cell phone, which is causing them to lose their soul and their intelligence and their common sense, okay, which is, you know, that controls their total spirit. You know, you're just feeding demons. You're keeping your face stuck in this phone all the time. You're not even, you know, focusing on anything else around you, the other, other realities around I mean, many times I see people with your cell phones and you're crossing the street, they can't even take their face out of the phone for a second to look to cross the street properly. They're just totally taking the confidence that this person, the driver is going to just see them and stop. But it's going to come a time that's not going to happen. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to die. So we're going to move on. That was one point I wanted to bring out. The next point I wanted to bring out to you guys is the CD's making of these slavery movies, they're sending you many subliminal messages in these movies to these the masses of black people, and you all do not see it, or you see it and you do not understand it. Okay? And <clears throat> especially that movie Get Out with um it's an interracial, I believe this guy is in an interracial relationship, which I'm gonna talk touch that in a second. Okay. You need to really pay attention to these movies that they're sending. They're giving you some truth and they're giving you some lies. A lot of it, a, a good portion of it is probably the truth. Um, but because they count on you, you all being so dumbed down and you all are so consumed with this predictive programming and you're not really paying attention to all of the real messages that they're sending you. You're not seeing how they slowly, you know, um, taking your life. I mean, they're really sucking the essence of your life away from you. They're, not, they're taking away your whole control and your will.
to make decisions and say, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to not focus on this phone for a little while. I'm not going to focus on the computer. I'm going to do some other things. I'm going to read. You know, they, 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 they count on you not really having the interest to find truth, okay? Because they make everything so damn convenient for you, you don't want to really do the extra work to find anything else because you want everything so convenient. Everything is not going to always be convenient. The other thing, too, um, I wanted to point out, blackens are being taken, harvests, people, black people are being killed for their organs. And they're, and they're eating flesh. This is something that they're getting people accustomed to, this cannibalism. Cannab cannabism. Uh, you know, I have sometimes, I tell you, my words, <laughs> it's not really the words, it's just, it's just the, the, the extra influ uh, the influences and the, um, the interferences that sometimes tend to be around that we can't see. And, I, and for those of you all in the truth, you know what I'm talking about. So, and I give references to Psalm 14, verse 4, okay? When the Heavenly Father, in Psalm 14, it says, Psalm 14 Have they no knowledge All the evildoers Who eat up my people As they eat bread And do not call upon Yahuwah Okay So he This, this is referenced in that Because that's exactly What's going on right now People are being eaten up Like bread Literally Alright The other thing I wanted to talk about which many of you all black men and black women, you all really think that you all have allowed this world to convince you that it's okay to mix with other races. And that the Heavenly Father will not object. Well, see, this is the whole thing. People who not want who not who does not want who not wanting to read the Bible and who have justified not reading the Bible. Uh, simply because they have been, uh, they put the blame that the Western, uh, the Western culture or, or, you know, white men of the Western um, culture have manipulated the Bible, but not on its whole in entirety. I keep telling people that it's not, you know, you cannot hide behind that um, um, reasons anymore. You can't keep hiding that. I think people think that if they don't read the Bible, or if they hide behind the lie that you know the white man wrote the Bible, or the the Western the Western um, have influenced the writing of the Bible, if you think that you can stand before Father Yahuwah and Yahushua and tell them that, you're going to be just sadly mistaken, because he said, "Show yourself a, uh, approved." Study so you show yourself approved, and none of you all will not even take the opportunity to read the Bible because you know why. Because if you read the Bible, you're not going to want to have to see that half the things that you all are doing and that half the things that you all are practicing in your lives and condoning in your lives, they are wrong and you shouldn't be doing it. So you think if you don't know it, if you pretend like you, you're not necessarily, I wouldn't even say pretend anymore because half of y'all are even pretending. If you figure if you, the excuse you hide behind or the excuses that you use uh, that the Bible is, uh, is Western, uh, it is a Western um Manipulated and a white man manipulated. The devil has convinced you all for so many reasons not to read the Bible, but that is to your own detriment. I'm going to tell you that right now. Mixing of race, this is forbidden and it should not be. This is what has caused us to stray from our beliefs. This is what led King Solomon into his demise and many of righteous men because they mix marriages, okay, um, from long ago. You know, Abraham had his servants swore to him that he would not take his sons to be married unto the Canaanites or take their daughters for wives, their sons for husbands. And I'm still doing a lot of research. I mean, as I go along, I keep telling people, you find out and you discover things, um, you know, as you go along in life. And um, you know, some things you may think that you have known, um, but... You know, you're still learning and you're still trying to um, discover, okay? So, you some things you may have, you know, you may find out and then later on the line, you find out that it, it wasn't, it was it's not as accurate as you think. So, you have to really um, 
keep searching and keep looking and you don't take anything for granted you know what I mean you have to really keep searching so <clears throat> um, the scriptures that really reflects it it starts with Abraham Genesis Genesis chapter 24 verses 2 chapter 24 verses 2 Genesis And Abram said to his servant, the oldest of his house, who had charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by Yahuwah, Elohim of heaven and of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughter of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but will go to my country and to my kindred and take a wife for my son Isaac. I want to also specify and point out, he said, do not take a wife. He didn't say wives. He said wife. That means one. All right. The next one that uh, emphasizes is Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23, which I think I had already pointed out to you all already in another segment that I was doing. Nehemiah. And that's. Uh, chapter 13 verse 23 in those days also I saw Jews who had married women of Ashod, Ammon and Moab and half of their children spoke the language of Ashod and they could not speak the language of Judah but the language of each people and I contended with them and cursed them and beat some of them and pulled out their hair and I made them take an oath in the name of Elohim saying you shall not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons or for yourselves did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin on account of such women? Okay. Among the many nations there was no king like him, and he was beloved by Elohim. And Elohim made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, foreign women made him, I'm sorry, foreign women made even him to sin. Shall we then listen to you and do all this great evil and act treacherously against our Elohim by marrying foreign women? Alright, so next one is Ezra. Now Ezra is an apocalypse. apocalypse, apocalypse. And, um, but you should be able to still find Ezra. You can go online and find it if you want to. And that's Ezra chapter 8. First Ezra chapter 8 verses 68. I believe it's 68. And it is. Okay, so it starts here again. Um, after these things have been done, the principal men came to me and said, The people of Israel and the leaders and the priests and the Levites have not put away from themselves the alien people of the land and their pollutions. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Edomites. For they and their sons have married the daughters of these people. And the holy race has been mixed with the alien people of the land. And from the beginning of this matter, the leaders and the nobles have been sharing in this iniquity. As soon as I heard these things, I rent my garment and my holy mantle and pulled out here from my head and bed and sat down in anxiety and grief. And all who were ever moved at the word of Yahuwah of Israel gathered around me. And I mourned over this iniquity, and I sat grief stricken until the evening sacrifice. Okay, and I strongly suggest for you to please go ahead and read um, chapter 8, verses 7, verse 68, and continue all the way on um, the whole of the rest of the whole entire chapter. And I think you could even go ahead and reach um, chapter 9. Because I think it really talks about them. He, it, it goes into deeper explanation of all of the different tribes. All these men. They had to put away their wives. They had to leave their wives. They said they pledged themselves to put away their wives. And to give rams and expectation for their error. They had to put away their wives and their children. So if you think that that's not going to happen again. It's not going to really matter. Because everything in this world is going to pass away. All these men with, men with foreign women. This is not... Um, acceptable in, uh, in our father's eyes you know whether you all want to accept it or not it's not acceptable um, 
So here's the other thing that I want to talk to you all about again. Is many of you all are working in this Babylonian system. Again, this is talking about the manipulation of black people, right? And how you all have been manipulated in believing um, life as it is, right? And um, how you have been indoctrinated into the system on all different aspects. And these are things that I wanted to point out in the first segment and I didn't have a chance to do so. So I want to talk about you all working in the Babylon system, all right? And I just did some things that I had pointed out that I find that what I see from my observation, how people lives are constructed in the Babylonian system. I have about, mm, I think I got eight minutes left and I'm going to try to get as many, as much of my observation as, as possible. Here's what I started off. It says, I said that you're selling your soul a little by little every day. You work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. You, 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 I'm sorry. You lose time with your family. Your life is mapped out and how you spend your time. When you should socialize, when you should pray, and where and to who you should pray to. You're told how often you can be sick and when you can go on vacation. And in fact, you're paying taxes to a government that you should not be paying taxes to. And I went ahead and pointed that out. I made some um, some observations. I made some notes on that. And from another documentary that I was um, reading on and just doing a little bit more research, according to the IRS, 90 million tax citizens are overpaying, yet overpaying, uh, overpaying their income tax every year. The taxpayer is not only paying the, their income tax, but their, as the employee as well, which the taxpayer is not aware of. You tax you people who work in the work in the Babylon system go to these jobs. You're paying taxes for your employer and you're not even aware of it. There's no law that requires the average American worker in the private sector a direct uh, a direct uh, unportioned uh, I'm sorry an unportioned tax a portion tax on your labor in compensation for services. Again, there is no law. And I'm going to challenge you all to go out and do this research. And the thing about it is, because this thing has been going so long, and no one never made the effort or time. I think there's many people have made the time and effort, but no one really, uh, people don't really, it's not, it's not registering to them, or they, they just don't have the incentive to inquire even further. They just rather accept it as it is, and, and just let this government do whatever they want to do. They, you all people let this government do whatever you want to do to you. You don't protest nothing against this government. Um, okay, the other thing I pointed out, you're forced to believe, you're forced to believe you cannot survive um, with finding, with, uh, without not finding a job in mainstream corporate America. Oh, Wherever you live, all right. The other thing I point out: everyone repeats the same function. No change. Uh, it's it's working. It's a working machine, and it's eating human people, especially black people. There's another thing that you all I had pointed out that these how this um, Babylon system has manipulated you. Uh, they use this thing labor, right? And they have turned it and re what they have done is they pretty much changed the name. When you change the label of something, it doesn't quite look the same, right? So instead of them saying labor, they call it careers, careers and professions, right? That's what the new terminology is. And they manipul manipulate you into believing you have a career. But when you think about it, your career is working in a company that's making somebody, else's, somebody else rich. You are, everything about that company and investment of company has nothing to do with you. With you, that company is not even invested in you. That company is invested in whoever that whoever the person owns that company. They're the ones that reap the benefits from that. And you have all of these people that work for that one person, or how many persons are in charge of this company, right? So you know, people overall, black people who are uh, who um who is pretty much inducted into the society and system, I want you all to kind of like sit down and evaluate and assess your lives and how your lives are so monopolized. 
You know, and the majority of you all are not happy. And you don't even understand why you're not happy. You know, and you're not trying to find out, find out, you know, what's the cause of my unhappiness. And if you stop to think about it for a second, it's everything in this system. Everything that this system has to offer you. You know, your, as I said before, your dreams, your values, your goals, it's all designed around this Babylon system. Okay? The other thing I point out, they encourage you to get an education. And, and when you get furthermore, which, which is just really getting you more faint brainwash into a trade of skill that just leads you into the same labor camp, you know, and again, they call it profession. The, all the structures is the same. There's no one different to the other. All right. Um, you know, I call this as a slavocracy. It really is. And, uh, you know, I know that people have... Um, you know, you've been you've been so convinced that you cannot not be in the system and not survive. But you know, believe it or not, you can. You really can, and that's for those who are seeking the truth. If you're seeking the Heavenly Father and you and um, Yahushua, you can survive. It may not be on the level of survival that you may um, be familiar with, but this is where your faith has to step in. You have to trust and you have to believe. And more importantly, people, you need to wake up. You need to open your eyes and really look at the situation around you. Look at your, the scenarios that are going on. There's many things that are going on. There's one thing I didn't, I didn't get a chance to, to talk about. I have two minutes left and I'm hoping I'm able to get this in. This is for many of you all are not aware of this, but this law is coming. It's called the New Ontario Law, which enables, it enables the government to seize children from parents opposing gender transition. The Canadian government may legally remove children from families that refuse to accept their child's chosen gender identity, thanks to the new legislation passed by the Ontario province. Okay? So people, let me tell you something. I'm not going to go through all of it. Again, please do research. This is the world that we are living in. If you people do not begin to open your eyes and see the deterioration, destruction of our human lives as it is, you are going to perish. You're going to perish. All of these immoral um, characteristics, immoral behavior, everything that is against the, the good book, the Bible, it is being played out day by day. Um, I'm down to like a minute and 33 seconds. So listen, I am going to just um, cut this short. I'm going to allow you to listen to the rest of Stephen Molly. This is mind control. People, you all are being controlled. There's different mechanisms they are using to control you. Your phone, your computer, your laptop. Seek the Heavenly Father and Yahushua. They are the only ones that will give you the strength and the courage to overcome these things, please, while the time is still available to us, okay? Peace and blessings to you, my Israelite family. Shalom.